a strong, independent woman, I handle my own lobster. Ah! Today we're in Saigon, Vietnam, taking on seafood of epic proportion. This is a representation of what we're hoping to find today. Oh, I thought you were ready. Last time at Sky Garden Barbecue, I took on the 66-pound seafood boat challenge. You want to try some of this king crab? Sure. Oh, my God! This time, we're cooking up one of the largest crustaceans to be plucked from the ocean. <laughs> Look at that. Bigger than your hand. It's that bigger than my nuts. face. Along the way, we'll discover the most unique seafood street food this city has to offer. It smells like goat udder. Let's try it out. So ditch your friend with a seafood allergy and get ready to eat. Are you ready for this? I am so ready. Let's do it. This is seafood like you've never seen before. Welcome to the Best Ever Food Review Show, the show where we eat three different foods at three different price points. And at the end, we tell you which one we liked the most. A little segment we like to call, That Was Worth the Price. This is so original, I'm like appalled. Right? This is Tom. We crossed paths when she fed me eggs while blindfolded a year ago. What do you feel right now? Regret. She's an Instagram personality and a college student living here in Saigon. Would you say lobster is popular here? Lobster is surprisingly popular in Saigon. I always perceived growing up lobster to be something that's quite expensive, mm. but nowadays it's moving on to some kind of street food almost. Today we're taking on this seafood journey together. But before getting started, there's something I've always wanted to try. To feel what it's like to have eyebrows. I'm so freaked out right now. I feel the makeup. No, it looks good. Yeah? It actually looks like better than I expected. After this video, people are gonna feel like, wow, you are really missing something. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so expressive now. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm angry. I'm happy. I was already expressive before the eyebrows, but now this is bringing my show to a whole new level. Thank you so much for the gift of eyebrows. I think now we're ready to eat some food. Express our food. Express our food. Wait, what? We are at our first location right now. I'm so excited to jump into this adventure. But first, I want to ask you, what do you think about my face? What would you say is my strongest feature? Hmm? Oh, God. Oh, she says your nose. Misdirected. Not my eyebrows? <laughs> no. <laughs> Am I sleeping alone tonight without you touching my face? Let's just talk about the lobster. Chef Heen opened her store just five months ago, and already it's a huge hit for locals craving affordable seafood. In order to keep prices down, she buys her lobsters in bulk from a local supplier, cooks them up right away, and starts selling them to the masses. You have lobster that you're selling just as street food. People can come by, pick up some lobster, keep going. In fact, there's like no chairs. Do people even eat here? People don't eat here. This is a vendor just to take away. Her inspiration was that when she went to restaurants, they had really high prices for the lobster. So she wants to bring like a lower price. I see you've got two different kinds of lobster. Which one is more affordable? Which one's cheaper? There's Vietnamese lobster and then there's Alaskan lobster. Oh, so that's Alaskan. So this is 109 per 100 grams and this is 79. So around $6 for one lobster. She splits the lobster in half and tosses it in a pan with garlic, chili, and tamarind sauce. Then fresh herbs and pork fat. For about six to seven dollars here, we have a pretty good sized lobster, I think. It's like a hand. I'm pretty happy with this. I don't think I could ever eat a lobster bigger than this, honestly. And there it is, it's ready to go. It's still a little bit warm. It is warm. She is. Mmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is my first time having tamarind with lobster. A little bit sweet, a little tart. I've never had tamarind on lobster before, so this is very new. I gotta say, I can feel that the lobster's kind of been hanging out a while. It's the first lobster I've had that felt like a little dry. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I mix it with some rice and some other side dishes, like it would be perfect. Fried rice. Yeah. yeah. These are pieces of fat, like... Pork fat? Yeah, oh, pork I love fat. that. We got some fried pork fat here. Here we go. It goes very well with the pork fat. Oh, man. That's what it was missing. The whole time, the lobster was missing a pig. It just needed some porkiness. We did it. I love the story. I love that she's doing something new. People like it. This place is busy as heck. Yeah, it's very interesting seeing all these fancy foods being incorporated into vendor type of selling. It's really cool. It's very Vietnamese. You've never felt so good. Before we jump into Saigon's most lavish lobster location, we're taking on a bonus seafood item and something you've never seen before in Asia. 
giant squid tea. We are at Mok Hong Lao Giant Squid. Thank you for allowing us to come to your giant squid shop. How long have you been in the business of gigantic squid? Years. I don't understand, like, where do you even find these? I just see normal sized squid everywhere. These are huge. All of these are imported uh, from places like Chile because they need to live in places where it's really deep. Now, are these just for show or are people really eating these? Yeah, she's processing them right here. These what we came here for today is what they call squid teeth. Squid teeth. This is actually a ball-shaped mouth muscle located in the head of the squid with a tiny beak at the end. Typically, squid teeth in Vietnam are the size of a pea. The ones here are freaking huge. Here, huge squid teeth. The biggest squid teeth I've ever seen. I haven't seen this anywhere in Saigon. How did you get the idea to do this? So she's seeing the model in Hong Kong. She's really interested in the Hong Kong model and she really likes eating squid, so. If you want to tell people that it's just your idea, we can lie about it, that's fine. It was your idea? That's great, that's amazing, wow. I love that. Adopted from Hong Kong, but with her own Vietnamese flair, her own cooking method. This is incredible, I can't wait to try it out. Thank you so much. Today we're trying squid teeth two ways. First, grilled. Glazed with cashew oil and chili paste and cooked until golden brown. Oh, it smells good. It smells good. Oh, Smoky. it smells like goat. Yeah, just a little bit. You're right. Like the yeah, goat yeah. udder. What yeah, the hell? Goat Here, let's try it out. Oh, uh, no sauce? No sauce. Oh my god. It actually does taste a bit like goat udder. It does taste a lot like goat udder. Mm. It is remarkably chewy, incredibly mm -hmm. smoky, and just a bit spicy. That's awesome. We're having like one weird food, and the only thing you can compare it to is something else that no one else watching has had. Everyone's like, thanks for the comparison. Goat <laughs> udder. I've never had goat udder. <laughs> Dish two, squid teeth in butter garlic sauce. The teeth are cut to size, then simmered with butter, cashew oil, onions, concentrated fish sauce syrup, and shrimp salt. Now this one I think is gonna have a lot of different flavor. Here we go, I'm gonna get a lot of this sauce on there. Amazing. I know this is gonna be good. A nice big chunk of squid teeth, let's try it out. That's delicious. This sauce to me is kind of like a punch in the face. Like it's super heavy, it's super in your face, but it tastes really good. I think if you eat that whole thing, you go home, you have a heart attack, you recover the next morning, you were happy you did it. This is like the epitome of Saigon right now. Low slung stools, and then some of the best food in the world that you've ever tried for a few bucks. Let me know that you about this. Put your money where your mouth is. Every single second counts enough to turn a little mole hill into a mountain. Welcome to Sky Garden Barbecue. You might remember last time we were here and we had a seven pound lobster. Oh my God, look at that. Here's what happened. The owner of this restaurant, his name is Lan. I said, I want you to find me the biggest lobster possible. The biggest one that came into Vietnam is in this restaurant right now. How big do you think that would be? Like you think, like this big? This is a bit too much. This is a representation of what we're hoping to find today. After seeing Vietnam's most affordable lobster, it's time to meet it's the most expensive lobster, but we need to catch it first. Have you seen king crab this big? I've never seen or had king crab. You've never had king crab? No, not at all. All right, we'll save that for another episode. What we're really here for is the lobster. There are two giant lobsters. I want to make a deal with you. I'm going to weigh this one. You're going to weigh that one. Uh, I... Okay. So I'm going to do this one first, and you can watch how I do it if you want. I just grab it in the body behind the claws. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put on the scale. It says 4.77. That is massive, but we don't know yet if it's the biggest one. I think first we have to grab the other one. And by we, I mean just you. Don't drop it. I'm a strong, independent woman. I handle uh -huh. my own lobster. <laughs> <laughs> He's really there you heavy. Go. Sorry, buddy. Oh, oh my God. 5.5. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's bigger than your hand. It's that bigger is than nuts. my face. From here, we're gonna go see how they cook this guy up. It's been a pleasure knowing you, buddy. Did you name him? He just looks like a Victor to me. Yeah, he looks like a Demogorgon to me. Victor, because he's a winner. Win at life, buddy. <laughs> There's an ongoing debate regarding whether lobsters can feel pain or not. Do you think lobsters can feel pain? Some argue that their nervous system is not complex enough, but no one knows for sure. Wait, you think they can feel pain? Yeah. Do you drink a lot at night? <laughs> In this restaurant, the lobsters aren't steamed alive, but rather bled out, both killing the lobster and creating our next unbelievable dish. Lobster blood jello. 
I did try this last time. Oh my god. People were doubting me that this was blood. They said, oh, it's like a urine, it's ocean water. But when you shake it, that is not water, man. Urine does not do that. If your urine is doing this, get to a doctor immediately. Let's try it out. That's actually very good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it, but it tastes like the sea. Yeah, exactly. It tastes like salt water. It's kooky, it's weird. I have not seen this anywhere else in the world. And even the people watching this video will still not believe this is a lobster blood. If it's not lobster blood, then what is it? What else becomes solid like that? Are you gonna make it happen today? Just settle for another delay. This lobster is so huge, it must be steamed for a full 45 minutes before it's cooked all the way through. While we wait for Victor to finish in the sauna, Tom teaches me more about today's secret ingredient, salted duck eggs. What is the big difference between a normal duck egg and a salted egg? I mean, it's more salty? The texture is different, and yeah, definitely more salty. So you can wash this ass off, and it will look exactly like this. Okay, so this is ashless. Yeah. Next, you will attempt to crack a salted egg, and we will see what is inside. Is it the same as a normal duck egg? Nobody knows for sure. Oh, what? Salted eggs are made by soaking duck eggs in straw ash and salt. The salt will travel inside the egg and change its properties. The yolk has become shriveled up and dark in color. I don't know how to describe that. Kind of umami, savory egg smell. I mean, it looks like it would smell awful, but I guess I look like that too. So you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna make it happen today? Or will you just settle for another delay? The lobster finishes steaming and the claws are removed. Our first dish, salted egg lobster. Starting with steamed salted eggs and water, creating a thick, rich, savory, yolky sauce, fully coating every corner of the lobster's tail, head, and whatever else is in there. Come on. So we've got a little bit of everything here. Let's talk about it. the salted egg lobster, body and tail. Let's go for it. I'm grabbing the tail meat. Whoa. Yeah, it keeps going, right? Look at that, that is a whole lobster. Um, I don't wanna share this with you. I think you should take that one out. There you go, and then it should just pop out pretty easily. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, you got even more. I got even more. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Salted egg lobster, gigantic tail. Let's go for it. Bro. Oh my god. What a special moment. It is. It's a very special moment. It's soft. It's not like too soft to a point where it has no texture. It's got some density to it. Some people don't like this part in a bigger lobster. But to me, it's like every other lobster tail. Dipping it into the salted egg sauce. <laughs> it looks like the pornography of food. Like kids under 18 should not be able to watch this. Mmm. The sauce. A bit gritty, but creamy also. Yeah, and the salt makes so much sense. Like, it enhances the flavor. They make each other better, like a good relationship. We're gonna eat the rest of what's on here later. Our claws will be prepared two ways. First, in butter garlic sauce. Start with butter, garlic, and an in-house sauce blend, and baste the claw thoroughly. Here we have a giant cloth. It's so big, where do we start? Okay, I'm gonna try to break this joint. Here we go. Oh no! Oh, there's no way! <laughs> that is so thick and so strong. This needs a sludge hammer. Oh, there it is! Huge claw. I am so tempted to not even bring it back. She wouldn't know. I could just say they couldn't figure out how to get it out. They threw it in the trash or something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna share it with her. I'm gonna share it, let's go, let's go. So, I'm gonna dump it out. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at the meat inside. It looks so juicy. It's bursting with flavor. Here we have a butter garlic sauce. I'm gonna dip it in. I mean, does it get any more egregious than this? All right, let's go for it. I am in love. The sauce has so much depth to it. I love this sauce. I actually like this even more than the salted egg. Totally agree. That one's done. On to course three. Our final dish, giant claw with fried garlic. Deep fry the claw and coat it with chili powder, bell pepper, onions, and fried garlic. Hey, you know what? Should we have the chef come on? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, I can't wait. Oh, oh there oh, we go. Oh, there it is. Dude, the biggest claw of any animal I have ever seen. We have the final giant lobster claw. Are you ready for this? I am so ready for this. Let's do it. 
Is this what it feels like to fall in love? It's so good. You look like you're gonna cry. I am gonna cry, it hurts. Oh, you like it? Yeah. But it hurts. Yeah. Sometimes love hurts, you know? Mm. <laughs> I genuinely think this is the best texture this could possibly get. The meat equivalent for crunchy. Mm. Can you look it up? It's like it's got give, it pushes back. It's so satisfying. That's it, I don't know what else there is to say. The whole point of this video was just to be a greasious, disgusting and over the top and delicious. All those together at the same time, like opposite pulling forces that, that create culinary excellence that cannot be topped. I'm drunk on lobster, I don't know what I'm saying. And that was uh, lobsters. We had three different meals at three different price points. But what meal do you think was a good value for the price? My Victor was very expensive, but honestly, I felt like he was worth it. I absolutely love taking out on a huge lobster, but for me, my favorite lobster today wasn't a lobster at all. It was a squid. The sauce, the environment, the fact that there's just some lady who imports squid from Peru so people can eat giant squid balls, it was awesome. And so that's it, guys. Why don't you let us know in the comments below which one you thought was a good value for what we paid. Is that the catch phrase? Maybe, maybe it's uh, worth it. Worth it. That sounds stupid. It doesn't go off the tongue naturally. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. That is it for this one. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. A oh, peace. Okay. I got seafood poisoning. I'm dead.